Fair Cameron. so glad that you're here. Um, I came all the way from California to, to come and to meet you, and I am so excited to be here at this public library in Scarsdale. Uh, as some of you know, I've tried to go to a lot of different libraries to read this new book, which I can't wait to share with you guys. It's about a, a little tiny acorn that grows up into a really big, strong, massive oak tree. But some libraries didn't want us uh, to be there, and I'm so thankful that we got to come here uh, together with you. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, for anybody who's curious, uh, wh why are we all here? We're here because we love God, we love our families and our children, we love our country, and uh, we, we love Scarsdale Public Library, and we're so grateful that we get to be here and read this story, and I, I hope that you all like it too. Well, uh, how many of you guys like Stories, storybooks. Do you like Do you like animals? Yeah. Do any Do any of you have any animals at home? Yeah. What kind of animal do you have? I have a one cat that's black and white, and then when he's a she's a biting cat. She's a biting cat, and she's black and white, and her name is Pandora. And what kind of What kind of animals do you have? Two salamanders and a French bulldog. Oh my goodness, what kind of animal do you have? A dog named Baylor. A dog named Baylor? And how about you, sweetheart? A dog named Lizzie? Izzy. Izzy. Named Izzy. Well, I have dogs too, and we used to have chickens and mice and birds and all kinds of things in our house. But I want to read to you a book about a story that takes place on a very magical island called Freedom Island. Doesn't this look like a cool place? And if you look on there, lots and lots of different kind of animals, including dogs, including salamanders, and other kinds of, of animals live here. And there's the really big tree called Sky Tree. Can anybody find Sky Tree on this island? Do you see the tree? Sky Tree. He's really, really big. And there's also a volcano that's on Freedom Island. Can you see the volcano? Yeah, if you look through the smoke, you can see the volcano. So I'm going to leave this right here so that you guys can, can look at this. Can you just hold that for me? And read to you the story about Sky Tree. Now, I've got to put on my glasses in order to read this. <laughs> do, any of, do any of you guys have glasses? You have glasses. You have glasses. My dad has glasses. Your dad has glasses. Too. Yeah. Well, glasses. I. You have very beautiful glasses. I like your glasses, and they help me read. Okay. I'm going to read to you this story about Sky Tree. As seasons change, you will grow. Spread your branches and put down roots like this story of Sky Tree. And as you do, let your fruit be sweet. Can anybody see the acorn that's buried in the ground? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And wh what does it look like up on top of the ground? Does it look warm or cold? Cold. Why does it look cold? Because it's snowing. Because it's snowing. <laughs> that's right. But look at the animals. They're underneath the ground, and they're burrowed in their little tunnels and their little nests. Do you think that they're warm and cozy? Yes. What, what are they doing? Hibernating. They're hibernating and they're sleeping. Now look at the acorn. Look how he's putting little roots down out of the bottom of the acorn. And what's coming out of the top of him? Leaves. Leaves. He's growing. What is he going to grow into? A tree. Okay, let's find out. Guys, look at Sky Tree. He's not an acorn anymore. He's growing up and he's getting much bigger. And look at all the little animals that are playing all around him. You are very small, but you are very loved. What is this bug doing right here? He's swimming. He's splashing in the water. I think he's doing a cannonball off of that leaf right there. Yeah, that's right, sweetheart. Okay, let's turn the page and see what happens. 
You were made to point up to the one who loves you best. Look at Sky Tree, you guys. What is what's flying all around Sky Tree? Can you see all these little things? Yeah. What are they? Uh, they're called. Uh, <laughs> what are they called? Fireflies. 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 Lightning bugs. Have you guys Fireflies. ever? Have you ever seen a real firefly? Yeah. yeah. See, I live in California and we don't have them. Can you explain yeah. to me what is a firefly? Like a mosquito that glows? Oh. <laughs> yeah? Actually, no. You tell me. It's actually kind of a beetle that can fly and it has, and on its booty it has fire. Wow, that was the best explanation that I've ever heard. She said it's actually a beetle that flies around and on its booty it has a light bulb. <laughs> of a firefly. Well, there's lots of them flying around Sky Tree as Sky Tree is reaching up to the sky. And look at the little, the little boy leopard. He's pointing up to the sky. And look at the daddy over here. He is also pointing up to the sky. What's in the sky? Who lives in the sky that loves you very much? God, the Lord. That's right. Okay, let's, let's Turn the page and find out what happens. Sometimes love hurts, but love is always worth it. Hey, you guys, can you see that the seasons are changing for Sky Tree? What season is it? Fall. Fall. Why, why do we call it fall? Because all the leaves fall down. How did you know it was fall? What do you see that says that's fall? We know because the leaves are falling. And what else do you see? The leaves are changing color. That's right. It's not winter anymore. It's not spring. It's fall. And look at this. The fox is fixing one of the branches that is broken off of Sky Tree. That might have hurt when that branch broke. And look at this guy over here. He is holding some flowers and talking to that girl. And he has two hearts over the top of his head, and he looks really nervous. I bet he may be telling her that he loves her, and he's not sure if she loves him. But love is always worth the try. Let's see what happens here. Because you've been cared for, care for others. What is this animal that's caring for Sky Tree right here? He's holding a branch to hold him up. Does anybody know what kind of animal that is? A bear. It looks like a bear. Does someone know what that is? It looks like a beaver and a lion. A honey badger. A honey badger. It's called a capy bara. Do you know that a capy bara is the largest rodent in the world? It's like a giant guinea pig, and it lives on Freedom Island. Hey guys, what, what season is it now for Sky Tree? Winter. It's winter. And who is this guy? Look at this owl with the hat, and he's carrying something. I, I wonder where he's going. He's delivering something someplace. Sky Tree. What? He's going to Sky Tree to eat some apples? Okay, let's find out. A tender word is soft, and it gives life like a spring rain. Can you tell me what season it is now? And look how big Sky Tree is getting. It's ginormous. Ginormous. And what do you think is helping the tree grow so big? Water. Water. And the sunshine. That's exactly right. Wow, this looks so great. Let's see how big Sky Tree is going to get. Look, there's houses inside of Sky Tree's branches now. Yeah, Sky Tree is like a big house with houses inside. It's called. It's called a tree house. A tree house. 
when you've grown when you've grown big, be excited to join something even bigger than yourself. Wow. Everybody must be so happy living in Skytree. You know, if I could pick any place in the world that I could live, I think I would pick to live right here. I want to live inside one of these holes in Skytree and be friends with all of these animals. I want to be in the blue house. And you want to be in the blue house? Okay. But always take time to enjoy the little things. Like, look at this. Hey, here's our owl. Here he is, he's flying, and now we know where he was going. He was going to Skytree to deliver something. Look right here, can you see? There's people going to church inside of Skytree. And what is a big dog with a hat doing up in a tree? Um, he's just like a wild mouse. He's like a big mouse. <laughs> That's right. And Skytree's branches are so big. Everybody looks so happy. I bet this is the happiest place in the world to live. Let's see what happens next. Oh, wait a minute. What's happening? Who are these people? Some people are attacking them. Some people are attacking Sky Tree. Look at, look at how big the teeth are on this wolf. Doesn't he look scary? What are they doing? They're enemies. They're doing their war. This is war. She's saying they're enemies. The enemies of Sky Tree, and they're bringing fire. What are they going to do with the fire? They're trying to burn Sky Tree down. They're trying to burn Sky Tree. They're trying to burn Sky Tree down. Look at this guy over here. Doesn't he look scared? And trying to chop him down. And trying to chop him down. Oh no! Let's see what happens to Sky Tree. Look what happened to Sky Tree, you guys. The big, beautiful Sky Tree. They burned him. And his branches have broken off. And he's all gone up in smoke. This is a very sad day for Sky Tree. Sometimes you will be sad and afraid. But brokenness is never the end. Hey, you guys, look here. All these little animals are getting together. And they're beginning to, to take care of the branches of Sky Tree. Do you think they're going to try to put Sky Tree back together again? Yes. Maybe they're going to try to build him back like and be stronger than ever. Like a big puzzle. <laughs> That's exactly right. Let's find out. Remember, the greatest sorrow can also lead to the greatest joy. Look at all the different animals. What animals do you see are coming back together to put Sky Tree back together? A bear? What else? A leopard? A leopard? A what? A small dog? And everybody's looking so happy. And look, look inside this hole. They're, they're building things together to make Sky Tree even stronger. Powerful. And powerful. Wow, look how powerful he looks right now. What looks different about Sky Tree? He has glass and metal. He has glass and metal. Windows to keep the animals warm and safe inside and to keep the tree very, very strong. He's looking like a big apartment building. He's looking like a big apartment building. So even more animals can live in there safely. I, I wonder what song these guys are singing down here. They're playing the guitar and all kinds of instruments. Maybe Jesus loves me? <laughs> Let your strength and your gentleness be what draws others to you. Look at this. The owl brought his friends to Sky Tree, and they're flying to ginormous Sky Tree, who is like a giant apartment building, whose branches le reach up to the sky, and all the animals are safe and warm, even when it's cold in winter time. All right, let's turn the page and see what happens next. In all these things, find comfort as you grow. Guys, look how happy everybody looks in Sky Tree. And Sky Tree has gotten so big, it's even bigger than the volcano that's when, down below. When, when my thing was trying to kill him, look, he loved me. Now he's been forced when they tried to kill him. And they tried to hurt him, and they tried to, to chop down and kill Sky Tree, but now he's strong, and, and he can provide a home for other people and, and provide comfort for them. 
You guys, let me ask you a question. <laughs> do you think that even though today you might be small, do you think that you're going to grow and get bigger and bigger in your life? Yes. That's right. Every time you have a birthday, you're getting bigger. What's, what's that? I want to be 100. You want to be 100. <laughs> You'll be very, very big. And as you, as you grow, you will grow bigger. And just like Skytree, remember to grow in your love for God, love for your brothers and sisters, your mom and dad, and your friends, and love for your country. And learn to comfort people just like they comfort you. Has anybody ever felt sad or scared in your life? Oh, I know. Was there ever a time where you felt really, really sad? Did something happen that made you sad and cry? Yeah. Um, boo-boos. What's that? Boo-boos. boo-boos. <laughs> and when you have boo-boos, um, who, do you like to, who do you go to that makes you feel better? Jesus. Jesus. Did any of you ever go to your mom? Yeah. Is your mama one of the best people in the whole world to make you feel better? Yes. And your dad is too. That's right. Boy, I'm so thankful for moms and for dads. And you know what? I hope that one day you grow up and you get a chance to be a mom and a dad too. And you can comfort your kids. And you can teach them all the things that you've learned as you've grown in wisdom through all the different seasons of your life. Well, you guys, if you like this the story of Sky Tree, Sky Tree is just one of the many um, trees and animals that live on Freedom Island, and there's lots more books, and all the stories connect together with the same characters, and you could read all about them, uh, because my friends from Brave Books are here, and it's really, really cool to uh, start diving into all of these stories that teach you about these important values. Um, I'd love to give a chance for the parents uh, to chime in. I'm so thankful that you're here. Before doing that, we've got quite a few people watching, can everybody wave to all of Kirk Cameron's fans that are watching on Facebook? They couldn't make it, but they're tuning in live here. So I want to do that. That's, that's right. Yes, would you like to see it? There you go. Are there any um, parents? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being brave and coming here. four or five hours to get here, and some of you have taken off work to bring your kids. Uh, thank you. I'm grateful and honored that we could uh, come here and share this, this time together. Are there any questions that you have about, about Story Hour, about this book, or, or other things that you'd like to ask? Um, I like to ask <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Here, this is the... Um, I He says he loves, loves Star Wars. He has lightsabers, and he says that the dark side and the light side always fight, but the light always wins. Yeah. Yeah. Parents, so is there anything that's on your mind you'd like to ask? I can answer yes. I actually um, am a Catholic school teacher nearby in Mountain Pride, and obviously we believe God and Art and library at your school. Yeah, I got it. School. That's awesome. Well, I'm I'm so glad for that. And ultimately, you know, listen, what I'm doing, anybody can do. Uh, what a great idea! We have these beautiful libraries like this that have an opportunity for us to gather together, not just to hear a story, but to meet each other. Doesn't this feel good to be together with people and say, I'm not alone. I'm not um, going to be just sort of pushed into a corner because I love God and my family and this country. I, I, I love meeting with other people. And this is a chance for you to connect. And this is a chance for you to talk about how to um, take all these beautiful things that you know and love and raise your family with and bring them to others with, inside of your community. So uh, this is awesome. And I hope that you'll do this at your school, your public libraries, and other things. And I've got lots of plans coming up this year where we can meet up together again in really special and powerful ways. Yes. Make it, you know, just that it's important 
to instill the love of God and yes. Jesus. Yes. And to bring the children up to understand that they're free. And that they're not free to share yes. you know, their love for God. I, I, I agree with you. You know, I, I, I just want to say that, um, you know, we, we don't live in unexciting times. <laughs> and, and, and history really is uh, his story, as some have said. And we're, we're somewhere in the middle of the book. And the very best books have dark times. They have challenging times. And I think we're in one of those chapters where it's a nail biter right now. But we can trust the author because he knows how to write the best stories. And what's necessary is men and women, young men and women, older men and women, of faith and character who do the right thing over the long haul, even when the odds are against them and they're under pressure. And that's when he multiplies uh, the light and the good. And it outshines the dark, as my little buddy over here always says. And, and that's what you're doing by being here. And so uh, in this critical moment, keep up the good work. Uh, and you'll be rewarded. Yes? I just wanted to thank you for coming to New York. Yeah. It counts New York out. That's right. And I, I just appreciate what you've done and the attention that you brought to us. Thank you. Well, thank you for welcoming me to New York. My wife is from Buffalo, New York. So, yes, I know, I know. I know, they, they have two seasons, um, winter and the 4th of July. Um, and, but I love Buffalo, and we need to be praying for the people in Buffalo right now, because there is, uh, there's, it's just tragic levels of um, entrapment. Uh, in their homes because of the snow and uh, I live in California and I'm so thankful when people come to California with good things to share with us because people write us off on the uh, west coast out there and and, uh, and here we are reaching across the entire country California to New York and this is exactly what we need to see and us gathering is sending a message all across the nation to all 50 states that um, that what we're doing is really really important and um, you're making the news. It's in the headlines everywhere. You can just go home and uh, share your videos on your social media platforms. Uh, let everybody know what you were here for today and what you thought of it. And uh, this is, is being talked about everywhere. So I'm, uh, I'm so thankful for you. I want to thank you for your work with homeschoolers as well. We have a couple of homeschoolers here today. We appreciate what you're doing. Yeah, well. I'm so glad that you've, you've taken um, the courageous step to homeschool your kids. We homeschool, we have six kids, four of them uh, are adopted, and at one point all six kids were under seven years old. And homeschooling kids we thought was just crazy, and then we realized it was one of the most beautiful things that bonded us together as a family. And it's a chance to remember that God gave your children to you, not to the government, and you're in charge of teaching them in their education. So. <laughs> to do that, nobody is better qualified and loves your children more than you. And uh, I thank you for taking up that mantle and that sacred duty to uh, invest your time and your resources into the hearts and minds of the future leaders of our country. Yes? So I just wanted to acknowledge all the younger parents here. My kids are in When we come together, it, it gives us hope, and we need hope like, like we need air. And, uh, and, and remember, uh, I was on Fox News this morning, and remember that uh, Samuel Adams, some of you know he made a great beer, but he made an even better founding father. And he said, with regard to difficult times in early America, uh, they were facing uh, oppressive governments that were stealing property and corrupting the morals of their children and all kinds of other things. And he said, it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather 
an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. And this, this morning, this afternoon, we are setting brush fires of faith, family, and freedom here in Scarsdale, New York, yesterday in Indianapolis, and it's happening all across the country because we're getting involved. We're standing up and speaking up, and I hope that it spreads across the entire nation. Yeah. Yes. I'm so glad that um, there are lots of teachers here also. I'm also a teacher um, from God New York City. You. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Yeah, because oftentimes the teachers' voices are silenced and we can't talk we can't about do the job you want to do. No, we're, we're, we're muzzled, you know. So I'm so glad that my fellow teachers are here and yeah. we're yeah. Yes. Hi, yes, good afternoon. I usually don't talk in front of people like this, but I'm not good. I'll get away from this opportunity. I'm a grandmother yes. and of 18 children. <laughs> My grand grandchildren, and I'd like to know how I can help my daughters and my grandchildren in this thing that, that's happening with the homeschool movement. How can I be of service in my own? Because I'm at home. Yeah. I babysit once in a while because they're they're homeschooling. You know, and how can I help in that area? Yes. How can she? How can she help as a grandmother with 18 grandchildren, raising them in a culture like this? You're already doing the right thing by being here. We love you. And, and guys, we need to pray for one another and pray for our grandchildren. I think that's number one. Because uh, nobody loves our grandchildren as much as God who made our grandchildren. And, and then I would say, um, some of you, um, what is your name, ma'am? Angela. Angela, please get to introduce yourself to Angela. Those of you who are homeschooling your kids, Please tell her what you've learned. Share some, uh, maybe your phone number and resources with her. Uh, I made a documentary called The Homeschool Awakening, which will give you, uh, it's sort of a, a, a starter kit into the homeschool world and kind of open it up to you. And um, I would say that Brave Books has a book of the month subscription, which delivers a book with a pro-God, pro-America value to your house every month. And they're wonderful. Uh, that would be a great start. And um, just the fact that you are interested, just the fact that you are not saying, I want to sit at home and, and, and cry about the culture, but rather, I want to stand up, I want to engage, and I want to help create the culture for my grandchildren, is half the battle. And I know that God is going to multiply all of your good efforts. So thank you very much. Okay, I, I have time to, uh, for one more question, and then we have another group that's waiting outside to come inside to hear. Yes. I have to say thank you, world. The family has been great. I live in White Plains, 10 minutes from here, and it's very rare to see a group of people with the same values so together in, in this moment. Yeah. It really is eye-opening, and I'm so grateful that you are here, because usually these events are very far from us. We can't travel that far, and so, I'm, like I said, I'm extremely grateful to see homeschool families and people with like-minded thoughts and beliefs, and it's all because of you and your willingness to come out here. Well, I'm so glad that you're here, and I'm glad that all of you are here. George Washington said that God has placed us on the stage of the world at this time, and our job is to play our role well. Nobody can do your job as a dad, or as a mom, or as a grandmother, or as a teacher, or a librarian. And, and if each one of us does what we're here to do, we can make a massive difference. And that small group will then inspire uh, masses more. So uh, please don't waste the opportunity to meet new friends. Meet one another. You probably have so much more in common than you ever thought, and there's more of us than we thought. And there are millions who want to go this way in our culture and in our nation, but they are often afraid, and they're silenced, and they feel alone. So take advantage of the time to make new friends and have contacts, and get together for coffee. Schedule your own story hour in this library and others, and uh, we'll watch and see what this, what this does. Um, I would love to answer some more questions. We, we've got uh, uh, another group that's eager to come in, and so we want to let them do that. 
But uh, I'll be here for a little while, and maybe we'll have a chance to circle back in a little bit. Thank you. Suggestion here from the gentleman in the center. He's asking if we could all sing God Bless America. I don't know, can we? Yeah. Who wants to start? God bless America. Thank you guys. God bless you and Happy New Year.